We are here with Pierre Lenard. He is one of the leaders of um, hands-on science in France, and we want to ask him about the teachers that he works with, those teachers of primary school that are sometimes afraid to teach science. So Mr. Lenard, tell us what do you do in your program and what do you tell teachers when they say they're afraid not to be able to answer a question? Well, it's natural that the teacher who is supposed to convey knowledge, uh, when he's asked something he doesn't know about, answer the children, I don't know. The problem with science is that uh, the science is becoming, apparently, in the media today, so complex, its achievement uh, so difficult to understand, uh, it looks to the microscopic world or to the immensities of universe, and this seems to the teacher out of reach. So when a child who is exposed to science through television, maybe, or conversations at home, ask a question to the teacher, the reaction of the teacher, who actually has the same vision of science as the children themselves, is to be afraid to say a mistake. And so he prefers to brush the question aside, or even, and worse, to put himself or herself in the situation of not having questions, which is more comfortable because if he doesn't have questions, he doesn't have to answer them. Well, we have to change this situation and there are many aspects of this change. One of them is to accept that science is made, of course, of knowledge, but also is made of questions one doesn't have the answer of. And uh, in fact, it's the most interesting part of science, is the things which we don't know the answers. The answers are nowhere, so that's where research begins. That's where science becomes creative. Uh, and it can be done at a very complex level in, in a laboratory by a Nobel Prize, but. It can also be done in the family, in the classroom, at a very modest level, which doesn't mean that the fundamental questions are not present, because motion, time, gravity, light are everyday every experience, and still they are fundamental questions of science. So there is not such thing that the science for the Nobel Prize and the science for the classroom. It's a continuum of questions. So we have to help the teacher to realize this. So the first step in this is that he accepts to say, I don't know. And the second step, of course, is to help him to find an answer to his question if science has already produced an answer, which for many subjects, of course, is the case. So we have to give to the teacher who has no time and, and no methodology and probably no library nearby and cannot explore internet and spend evenings while he has a heavy working day behind and a family to care for. So we have to provide the teacher with simple ways to have answers. And that's what we did with the website in France where scientists answer questions that teacher ask. And we have, since 10 years now, we have a continuous flow of questions which are very interesting because they reflect first the fact that the teacher accepts to say, I don't know. Second, that his curiosity is working, is uh, in operation. Third, that we can establish a dialogue between the teacher in a primary school in a remote village somewhere in France and a scientist in his laboratory with all his equipment and machines and so on. Well, thank you very much. It's, uh, you've answered my question. Um, now we can go ahead and ask many other questions and let people do it too. Thank you.